This week, we're going to go over five reasons why you might consider adding an extended fast for weight loss. And stick around to the end where I'm going to share with you Linda's story, where she was able to lose 112 pounds, but even better, she's been able to keep it off for the last three years. And it's coming right up. There's no formal definition of what an extended fast is. However, I define it as anything longer than 24 hours. So at 24 hours, you're eating one meal a day. If you drop that, I call that extended fasting. And there's several really good reasons why you might consider adding this as a trial. Number one, you might like it. Extended fasting is just another tool in your tool belt. That is, there's lots of different ways to lose weight. If you have a lot of weight to lose in a short period of time, there's something important coming up. It's after the holidays, you gained a lot of weight, you wanna lose it. You have a wedding coming up, you wanna look good. You can use this because it's a tool. But if you've never used it before, you're not gonna know how. So it's important to keep that from getting rusty. Also, it all makes the shorter fast look easy because if you're doing two, three day fast, all of a sudden that 24 hour fast doesn't look so bad. Number two, it's much more powerful than those shorter fasts because it's more time and you can extend it to as long as you like. That's one of the key advantages of fasting because if you follow a diet, say the Atkins diet, and you're very strict and you follow the Atkins diet and not working, you can't be more Atkins than Atkins. However, with extended fasting, you can just keep going day after day after day. There's no upper limit to how long you can fast for. In fact, the longest fast uh, world record was over 380 days. And this was medically supervised, and yes, he did fine, was able to maintain that weight off. So it gives you as much power as you want, as opposed to some diets and even shorter fasts where they're limited in how powerful they can be. Number three, you're using the sleeping time to your advantage. And what I mean is this, when we're sleeping, you've got eight hours where you're not eating. So that's fasting by definition. If you go the full day without eating and then tack on another eight hours, well, you're getting that eight hours of fat burning almost for free because you're just sleeping. So you're adding up those eight hours, eight hours, eight hours each time and that's all burning fat because the great thing is that when you wake up the next day, your body has all, almost completely reset. In fact, you generally don't feel any more hungry the day after not eating than any other regular day because your body has totally reset itself. Number four, hunger. It tends to go down over time and if it keeps going down over time, then that's going to make it easier for you because you're still burning the same amount of calories. The other thing is not only that hunger decreases, but your metabolic rate tends to stay up. And we've covered this in previous videos. When you're not eating, your body actually increases the amount of energy that is burning because your counter regulatory hormones, that is things like the sympathetic tone and noradrenaline tend to go up and therefore you are going to have good energy, your hunger is gonna go down, and you'll be burning fat, which is a tremendous advantage. And number five, it's more effective because you're spending more time in fat burning mode. Again, we covered this in the five stages of intermittent fasting. And what happens, of course, is that as you don't eat, your body goes through a very um, stereotyped response. You start off by using your glucose in the blood, which is great if you have high blood glucose, like type two diabetics, then it's gonna burn through its stores of glycogen, then it's gonna go through this period of gluconeogenesis, which is protein burning, which sounds bad, but you're really just getting rid of old cells. 
And what happens, of course, is that the protein gets turned into glucose and then you go into fat burning mode. And sometimes that can take 18 hours, uh, sometimes 20 hours, depending on where you started from. But during those extended fasts, all that time is being spent in the fat burning mode because staying in that sort of fat burning mode and that stage five of intermittent fasting can sometimes be much more efficient at burning body fat. So it can be in fact much more effective than five days of one meal a day, for example. If you do a five day fast, it may be much, much more effective than those five. And perhaps it may not even be that much more difficult. So the other thing is just to be aware of how long you should do it for. There's no upper limit, but generally we say five days, seven days is probably the maximum we would recommend. Once you get above that, you start to risk other things such as refeeding syndrome, which is a very low risk at five to 10 days. But as you go above that, it certainly can go up. And the other thing to remember is that the longer the fast, the gentler that you have to break it. So to be very careful when you're breaking it at five to 10 days, you're not going to be in terrible danger. But again, remember, always be safe during fasting. So this is Linda, and she was a member of the fastingmethod.com for five years, and she's been able to lose a total of 112 pounds. And this is her story. She said that she started in 2019 when she was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Well, because of that, she got the uh, encouragement to go and she joined the fasting method. Very quickly, in less than three months, she was actually able to reverse that and also normalize her blood pressure all without medications. And that all happened within the first 30 pounds. She went and got some coaching as well as joined the fasting method community and over the next year lost an additional 82 pounds. She paused for a little while to maintain focus on other things, but then she was always wanting to lose the rest of the weight. So this time she really focused and lost the rest of the weight. What she attributes her success to is really some of the uh, education that we provide at thefastingmethod.com. Prior to this, she would always be told by medical professionals and fitness experts and the media that it's all about calories in, calories out. It's all about willpower. But in fact, we teach people that it's not about willpower. It's really about understanding your hormones and also setting up a system where you're going to succeed. And that system isn't just willpower. It's about having the right people to provide you support. It's about having a community to support you. It's about being able to talk to people about fasting. It's about using these different tools, such as intermittent fasting, such as extended fasting. Rather than focusing purely on calories, it didn't work. Everybody knows it, everybody's tried it, it doesn't work. And ultimately, it wrecks your metabolism. And through the fastingmethod.com, she not only got the right education, she was able to learn the science behind weight loss and getting cutting edge information that's really the same information that I give to medical specialists in lectures. And very importantly, she was able to get the guidance and she was able to get the support from the community and with the coaching to implement that new material. And that's really what made the difference. And she says without it, she would still be in this cycle of weight loss and weight gain. So one of those big tips is to really get that support because it's not about just knowing how to lose weight. It's about having those automatic systems. It's about having the right environment and having the right emotional support. And that's all things that we try to provide at thefastingmethod.com. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. If you wanna learn more about fasting, maybe check out this next video and I'll see you next week.